Hello friends, hope you're doing well. I'm making this video to give a brief explanation on uh, my latest spec, which is auto trend lines and support resistance sentiment. Uh, in this video, we'll go through briefly about uh, how the indicator is derived and a bit about settings and then uh, how to use them. And let's get started. So the trend lines, um, the first thing is trend lines. Uh, to draw a trend line, what we do is, you know, first draw a zigzag. So the zigzag is here, the settings are here. Right now we're using eight as a zigzag length. Uh, if you want a trend line to be drawn on a shorter time frames, <clears throat> try to reduce the zigzag length. Um, or if you want to do it on a longer time frames, try to increase the zigzag length. And based on the zigzag length, we first get the pivots. And then uh, the next thing is the search depth. So we look for last 21 pivots here as for the settings, the search depth is 21. So look at last 21 pivots and see which direction the pivot highs and lows are going. So are they going in an uptrend? Are they going in a low, uh, downtrend? Or are they going in a both? Sometimes the trend will be choppy and you can see, uh, for example, if if you increase the <clears throat> trend line, um, the depth search depth, you may also find a trend line which is passing through this, probably, right? So because this is like, you know, the pivot height which are going in a downward direction, and yeah, so we find the pivots high and lows which are going in a single a single direction and try to get a trend line out of this. And when deriving the trend line, we consider, uh, we try to calculate different combinations. For example, you can see that this pivot is not touching anything. This also can be a trend line, right? So you can also draw a trend line something like this. It's just this, then why not? Why not this and why this? So what we do is um, we, we draw all possible trend lines whenever there's a, uh, you know whenever we need to scan and we'll try to uh, calculate the strength how the calculated strength is calculated is you know how many points how many candles are touching the trend line how many candles are inside the trend line and how many are outside the trend line all these things are, are considered when cal calculating the strength overall strength and in each direction we'll only consider the most the strongest trend line Right, so you can see the line strength here. This is the arbitrary number, but actually, this has been uh, there's a scoring method which we have been internally implemented in the script. Right, so um, so we derive the trend lines which are uh, uptrend high, uptrend low, and also we derive downtrend high, downtrend low. Um, but you can see that you know we only see two trend lines here. Uh, downtrend high and downtrend low are not there. Why are they not there? That's because we have a setting called max pass distance. For example, um, if the trend line derived is more than 200 bars back, then ignore the trend line or do not show the trend line. So if you want to still show it, if you want to override the settings and show it, there are two options. One is increase this number. Other one is you check this retain last. Okay, so when you retain last, what happens? It will show the last trend line in each direction. Let's still calculating. Yeah, you can see this. It's a uh, downtrend high, and this is a downtrend low, which are not significant anymore because the price has moved up a lot. So it's not really a valid trend line for our case at present. And also, we have a setting that you know um, max angle, so the angle of the trend line is more than sixty is not sure because you know, it may be it may be too steep and it may not make much sense. So if you don't want to add this filter, you can actually change this. Um, you can make it 90 so that all the trend lines are shown here, irrespective of what angle they are in. And I'll uncheck this straight in last. Um, also, may, um, another option we have is you know um, show historical trail. So historical trail, by showing a historical trail, what we do is you know, uh, the trend lines keeps changing all the time. So enabling historical trail will show you where the trend line previous changes happened. See this? <clears throat> you can see that this trend line came to here and then it got changed. So it will show all the previous historical trails so that you know um, you can estimate uh, how you could have traded um, during that time and all those things. Or you, you could have. You can see the you know kind of a backtest. You can visualize the backtest how this trend line has behaved and all. But uh, keep in mind that um, this is enabling historical trail will distort uh, support resistance lines, 
uh, that's because fine script has a limitation that only up to 500 lines can be drawn. So um, since these historical trends take a lot of lines, so it may remove some of the old um, support resistance lines from the chart as well. Right, and that's about these two settings. And then re-evaluate last. So uh, this is nothing but when you are creating a trend line here, for example, when a new pivot is formed, it has to form a trend line. Um, it just says that just re-evaluate re the last trend line which is already there and then rescore it again and then compare it with the trend line which we have. So if you uncheck that option, what it happens is you know it still considers the last uh, trend line which is there, but it will not try to reevaluate the score. It will just take the previous score of the trend line. Uh, which may not be good because you know if there are more pivots touching this line, it should also consider that. Or if there are more flow which is happening on this line, it should consider that as well. So I prefer to use the reevaluate re last option um, in this. And okay, so this is about uh, how we derive the trend lines. So once we derive the trend lines, uh, we need to find out a trend, overall trend. You can see that what mark here, uh, we have tried to derive two things, which is the uh, overall trend and what is the status. Okay, so how do we do that? So first thing what we do is we need to select two appropriate, most of the appropriate trend lines. Um, the appropriate means uh, there can be a few things, but uh, like, you know, uh, sort order. We, what we do is, you know, we sort the trend line in the order of which one is formed last right now what we have we have only two trend lines here maybe if you go to a different one no it's all of them have okay this one if you see this one uh, it's still uh, same because you know uh, this trend line is too old it's not considered maybe what we can do we increase this to 400 probably so that it will also show up uh, this trend line let's see yeah, so it also show, uh, it's also showing downtrend low here. See this one. So what it's trying to do is, you know, um, the sort order, it's trying to sort the trend lines in a most appropriate, which is most appropriate and all. So right now, this uh, the order of sorting is uh, like, you know, when the trend line is formed. So it will check for the last bar. Like, you know, this trend line last contact happened 40 bars back. This is 165 bars back and it's 234 bars back. So it's considering these two trend lines because uh, these are the most recent ones and this is slightly older one, right? So this trend line and this trend line are considered so that it's saying that it's a falling wedge triangle. It's a falling wedge, right? Um, and it's broken upside because the price is outside the higher trend line. So pivot high trend line, so it's broken outside. So let's change the sort order uh let's see if there's anything yeah you, you can see that this trend line is more stronger than the rest of the two so if you change the star sort order to line strength it will be something different right if you see line strength this comes uh, this will move to the first position the down trend low will move to the first position and you can see that um at this point these two are considered as the most appropriate trend lines and the overall trend, instead of saying um, falling wedge or triangle, it says downtrend. Again, it's broken upside. I agree. Right. And similarly, another option which we have in sort order is distance. Uh, it is like, you know, how far the close price is between the trend lines. So the closest two ones which are taken, which will be taken. So here in this case, these two are the closest ones, so it's again goes back to falling wedge triangle and broken upside. All right, okay, I prefer to keep the latest one so that you know, um, we have the um, you know, it, it uses the latest trend lines derived and not the old, uh, not something which is old and it's not appropriate anymore. But sometimes, you know, in this case, uh, even though this is the latest trend line, this one looks to be more appropriate one. Right, so sometimes we need to apply our discretion here um, and see, you know, how do we want to see this? Take this uh, trend and status suggestion as a, like, you know, just a suggestion and apply your your own discretion on what actually happening here, what is the actual trend, and all these things based on the lines. Okay, and 
the next setting which we can see so we discussed about how we derived the zigzag and trend line and from the from the trend line how we derived uh, this trend and the status and support and resistance they are derived based on the zigzags again and also based on the divergence where uh, oscillator and, and you can use a list uh, any of the oscillator which is listed here and uh, lines will show how many lines you want to how many support and resistance lines you want to display on the chart right, right now it's only 10 yeah so 10 overall 10 you can see that um, there's one resistance level and then we have support levels for this right um go to the next so alerts so alerts can be of three types first is a trend line alert and new support resistance alert and support resistance break alert so trend line alert is just about the status whenever the status change it will send the notification so that means that whenever a new trend line is there or whenever the trend uh, whenever it's broken upside downside and all these things you'll you'll get a notif you'll get alert notification and all those things right and new support resistance whenever a new support resistance created uh, it will send an alert and sr break whenever the support resistance is broken you will get an alert you can enable this so you can choose to um, you can choose which one you want to get alert and um, you know enable or disable whatever you need right max sr alerts it's a, it is actually like you know whenever a support resistance is broken you will also send what is the nearest support and resistance levels so this number will give you last three support levels and last three resistance levels up to last three layer support and resistance levels right so the custom field is custom type field is for uh, users who use third party bot services etc so if they want to add any more other information um, along with them um, along with the alerts they can use that um, you can make use of this uh, custom type field so all the alerts are um, you know sent as a JSON in a JSON format. So if you are writing a webhook to you know import these alerts, uh, you can interpret it e easily, and you can actually extract the values easily from this uh, from the alerts. Okay, so that's about alerts, and uh, I think one last thing is about the widgets. Um, so the two are just like you know uh, for one for support resistance here and one for trend lines so if you don't want these uh, widgets you can actually disable them in the settings here um, also you can control what position where do you want them to be placed and what is the size of the tables and um, for support resistance how many levels you want to show that also you can configure it here right and that's about the settings and that's about um the indicator and how do you how do you trade this like you know um uh, one of uh, one of my um friend or one of my customer asked whether uh, are we trying to derive um these chart patterns so i'm um, actually not really i'm not really trying to derive any of these chart patterns to this i'm just trying to draw a trend line and uh, maybe you can uh, use this trend line to you know um, interpret these chart patterns and trade in the same lines right um, so what i do is i know i am more interested in you know whether it's an uptrend i'll try to buy in the um, when the price is near to the support level uh, or the lower uh, um, uptrend low pivot low uh, trend line uh, if it's downtrend um, it's probably try to short um when it's near the resistance levels here and also uh, we can use make use of these um, support horizontal support resistance levels as a secondary confirmation as well um the triangle breakouts these are uh, this is actually pretty cool um whenever there's a triangle breakout uh, and also towards the near of the triangle when it breaks upside just set a stop loss below the triangle and uh target levels up to you know uh, one is two or uh, one is to one or whatever uh, whatever your idea i actually prefer to not set target levels um i prefer to i know trail my targets like you know trail my stops whenever it moves up i trade with it and then when the trend reverses let it hit and close the trade all right so that's about the indicator and how to use them
um, let me know if you have any questions um, and let me know if you have any suggestions. Um, thanks very much for watching the video. Wish you all the best. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Bye.